My name is Dick Ward, and I'm running for re-election as one of your selectmen. I have currently been serving for six years. My wife Judy and I have lived in Carver for 49 years, 49 years, and moved here from Pembroke in 1964. All five of my children grew up here in Carver and were educated here in Carver. Three of my grandchildren were educated here in Carver and continue to live here now. My education background is I graduated from Silver Lake Regional High School and I received my bachelor's degree in education from UMass Amherst. I have been actively involved in your community since 1964. I've been a teacher here in Carver and in the Plymouth Carver Regional System for 31 years. I served in our town as a volunteer fireman, special police officer, and in the 60s and 70s, I taught Sunday school and ran a youth fellowship program at the United Parish Church with my wife, Judy. I helped start several youth sport programs here in town. I served on the recreation committee. I helped start the Carver High School Boosters Club, Athletic Boosters Club. I was the town moderator for three years. I was elected to the Board of Selectmen in 1976, and I served as its chair at that time. As a selectman, over the past six years, I've been involved on many committees and subcommittees. I've been on the Master Plan Committee. I was on the Earth Removal Committee. I was on the Plymouth Airport Advisory Group. I was on the Carver Agricultural Commission, and still are, and several negotiation committees working on behalf of our town with all the union employee groups. My question is, can the town of Carver afford a new school at this time? Our education here in Carver is outstanding, but our buildings are deteriorating. And if we aren't proactive, our children's education will also deteriorate. Proactive, to me, means we must follow up on our vote to place Carver in the Mass School Building Assistance Authority pipeline for new school funding of approximately 50% reimbursement. Hopefully more. Everyone in our town is concerned with our kids' education. Yet, because we could not come together as a unified group, we have already lost at least 10% reimbursement. Let's not lose it again. Lately, I have heard, and there has been a lot of criticism about how our town has been financially managed over the past six years. I am very proud of how we have come through this period of recession during these six years. I'd like to cite a recent article from the Boston Globe about the DOR study on taxes. 49 towns in this study. Since the great fall of 2007, six years ago, Carver has had next to the next two lowest increase in taxes of the 49 towns. The next to lowest increase over that six year period. All the towns throughout the state, including Carver, have been facing a serious budget crisis and will be in the future. We have been vigilant and we are scrutinizing each department's budgets. When someone retires, we are not replacing them. It is difficult to find ways to spread the work over the remaining people, but that is what we have been doing. 
I often ask myself what a selectman should be. It pretty much boils down to three words. Respect, responsibility, and restraint. There actually needs to be more respect for all the people who volunteer on committees and boards in our town. It is our responsibility to make sure we carry out what is best for our town. And restraint is a form of mutual respect we must all practice. I look forward to the privilege of continuing to serve the town of Kava that has been so good to my family and me. I ask your support for my bid for the position of selectman and for your vote on April 27th, Election Day. Thank you. I'm Paul Johnson and I'm a candidate for the Board of Selectmen. You know me as a Little League coach for 10 years. You know me as the founder of the Carver Sportsman's Club Scholarship Breakfast. For the last 11 years, we've been raising money to provide scholarships for Carver High School seniors and sending kids to the Massachusetts Junior Conservation Camp. This year, our breakfast is on Saturday, May 18th. Come and join us. I also volunteer as a hunter education instructor for the Division of Fish and Wildlife. I'm a member of the Plymouth County League of Sportsmen. Mentoring Kava Youth Sporting Activities is one of my passions. Volunteering in local government is another of my passions. You also know me as a member of the Firearms Licensing Committee, the Kava Finance Committee, the Chairman of the Legal Services Committee, or as a two-term chairman of the North Kava Water District Commission. If you watch CATV, you may also know me from my TV show, The Game Gourmet. I've been elected to public office twice and know well the responsibilities and commitment required and expectations that come with public service. The first responsibility of any candidate is to run an effective and a positive campaign. My campaigns for Water Commission were positive and I have a record of accomplishment of which I am proud. My campaign for Selectmen will be positive and focused on the changes we need to make to move Kava towards affordability for our businesses and residents alike. I've lived in Kava since 1990 with my wife Barbara, who has earned her place in heaven for putting up with me for the past 34 years. We raised two sons in Kava. Dan is an English teacher who just won an award as an outstanding educator in Houston, Texas. And Jeff is a practicing attorney here in the Commonwealth. This February, we welcomed our first granddaughter, Genevieve, into the family. I earned my bachelor's degree in industrial engineering. I've been a manager responsible for profit and loss in private sector manufacturing businesses for more than 34 years. The most important function of a manager in the private sector is that of change agent, a facilitator of positive change and growth. In my 34 years as manager, I've faced many difficult tasks. I modernized the manufacturing processes for an aging product line, adapting computer controlled equipment to reduce cost and improve quality. I was instrumental in achieving original equipment qualification of automotive batteries for Ford, Mazda, and Chrysler in record time. And I was part of a management team that reversed more than a decade of losses, restoring profitability to a small Quincy manufacturing facility. In my present job as manufacturing manager, I've managed to maintain profitability in the worst economy in memory. In Kava, I was a member of the Firearms Licensing Review Committee. I took on one of the most controversial issues of the late 1990s. This issue was marked by division and rancor. It was a public relations disaster for our town. The policy I drafted restored civility to the licensing process and respected the role of law enforcement 
in public safety. Since becoming president of the Sportsman's Club, I quietly worked together with Chief Parker and Chief Mitch to open the club's shooting range for the first time to Carver Police training exercises. Working together, the club and two consecutive police chiefs, we lowered travel costs associated with training and more importantly established a new and more positive working relationship with the sporting community. Most of this work was done out of the public eye and without fanfare. I'm proud of my role in that process. As chairman of the Legal Services Committee, I took a leadership role in drafting a comprehensive request for proposals used by the Town of Carver in soliciting proposals for Town Council services. In the process, I learned a lot about Chapter 30B procurement processes that will come in handy as your next selectman. As chairman of the North Carver Water District, I worked together with Commissioners Deb Silva and Kevin Tracy to set priorities and provide leadership for the district. We navigated a minefield of technical and financial obstacles with an entrepreneurial spirit worthy of a private sector business. When it became clear that we faced significant deficits, we reached outside the district to find new non-tax revenue. We negotiated an out-of-district water supply contract with Deacus Cranberries to help fill the gap and fulfill our promise to make this a self-sufficient fiscal entity. The Deacus deal stands as an example of a constructive relationship between an important business and town government. Only an elected commission with dedicated citizen advocates could have kept faith with the residents of the district, our general fund taxpayers, and our businesses as well. The Water Commission, under my leadership, and thanks to the dedication and hard work of my fellow commissioners, Kevin Tracy and Deb Silva, will not be a burden, but stands as an example of people setting aside politics and working to do the business of the people of Cava. I'm proud of my leadership role on the North Cava Water Commission. The challenges we face in Cava require focus and dedication. I believe in tackling the most difficult issues first. We can't wait another day to begin the difficult work of affordably rebuilding the Carver Elementary Schools, or of solving our unfunded pension and health care liabilities. Solving these problems will require consensus based on compromise and affordability. We must prioritize our needs and make the difficult choices required to move this town forward. Leadership must summon the courage to place these issues on the table and assign them our highest priority. Solar panels and websites won't build that school or fund our pensions. As your selectman, I will not be diverted from the most important tasks at hand. When the campaign ends and the work of governing begins, you need a selectman with a history of solving problems and providing leadership. I'm Paul Johnson, and I approve this message. On April 27th, you will have a chance to approve this message as well. I'm asking for your vote, and I'm promising in return the same dedication and efforts as your selectmen that I applied to my job as chairman of the North Carver Water District Commission. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Carver Community Access Television for the opportunity to explain my candidacy. I am Jack Franey, your treasurer tax collector. I am a candidate for re-election. I've lived in town 
For 28 years with my wife, Terry, we raised our twin daughters, Carrie and Christy, who went through the Carver school system. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration and a Master's degree in Taxation. I am a certified public accountant with 39 years experience in tax planning, municipal finance and business management. I am also a certified municipal treasurer. I served three years on the Carver Finance Committee. By education and work experience, I have the most in-depth knowledge of the complexities of municipal finance. I'd like to list some of the ways that my education and work experience saved you money. I restructured the tax repayment agreement for the Ravenbrook Landfill Solar Project, resulting in additional revenues of $100,000. I upgraded the bond rating to Standard & Poor AA- minus in the worst economic recession in our lifetime. I increased cash flow and stabilized cash balances through conversion to the quarterly tax billing system. I implemented cash receipts and reconciliation reporting systems. I simplified our tax bill to include the payment required to qualify for the 3% discount program, eliminating taxpayer uncertainty and guesswork. I cut interest costs by 50% as an incentive for taxpayers who enter into a five-year repayment plan when they are in tax title. For my third term, my plans are to develop a comprehensive financial plan to build a new fire station under the levy limit, finance the school renovation project through the Building Stabilization Fund. This will allow us to begin construction of a new police station when debt exclusion payments have been completely offset. I plan to work with a new town accountant and a new town administrator to establish the financial management team approach along with the assessor finance committee and assistant superintendent of business and finance for operating and capital projects planning. I plan to develop financial policies and procedures to guide the town in establishing structure to maintain our bond rating. I've earned the trust and respect of Carver voters during the past six years as your treasurer tax collector. I've worked diligently to improve the operation of the treasurer collector's office. I've improved the cash flow and increased Carver's bond rating, which directly benefits Carver taxpayers through lower borrowing costs. I've spent my career helping people manage their finances and minimize their taxes. I ask for your vote on Saturday, April 27th, to continue to advocate on your behalf as your treasurer tax collector. I'm John K. Franey, candidate for re-election for treasurer collector. Thank you for your time and interest in my candidacy. Hello, I am Paula Newt and I am running for the position of Treasurer Collector for the Town of Carver. Most of you may recognize me from my 10 years at Rockland Savings Bank, South Coastal Bank here in town, where I proudly served as branch manager for six of those 10 years. Others may recognize me from the community activities with which I've been involved in, such as the South Carver Lions Club, Pack 63 Carver Cub Scouts, Carver Daisy Girl Scouts, and many of the other sports and cheerleading groups in town. My background includes 17 years in banking with 14 of those years in managerial positions. I came to Carver Town Hall looking for a new career in the financial area and for over nine years have proudly served as your assistant tax collector. I have earned Massachusetts Municipal Collector Certification and am currently preparing to re receive Massachusetts Municipal Treasurer Certification. What I also bring to the Treasurer Collector position, however, is practical experience. With the exception of signing checks, borrowing money, and final decision or actions on accounts, I already do the job. I consider myself as your employee and the Office of Treasurer Collector not only as a public service for you, but for other departments of the Town of Carver as well. It is critical that the Treasurer Collector's departments daily, weekly, monthly, and annual operations flow more smoothly and efficiently than they have. And it is equally critical that this office does not continue to be a weak link in the running of Carver's government. The best way to avoid a problem 
any problem is to be proactive and face it head on before it has a chance to become a serious issue. As an example, the reconciliation of receipts in the Treasurer Collector's Department has become a time-consuming problem, preventing a timely balance of the monthly books. The problem is far from insurmountable, but does require time and attention to detail and a willingness to dedicate oneself to being an effective manager. With hard work and dil diligence, the books will be balanced on time, making the town accountant and the town auditors very happy. Most importantly, I want to and will bring accountability back to the office of Treasurer Collector and to you. I have no political agenda or aspirations. I feel it would be a disservice to the citizens of Carver not to step forward and offer you a more efficient and thorough Treasurer Collector. I will also work to make this an appointed rather than an elected position so that in the future, should anyone not live up to the responsibilities of the office in a timely manner, he or she can be terminated. We must have a clean slate with the Department of Revenue at all times. I believe the policies, procedures, and laws of the Town of Carver and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts are not to be taken lightly. The Office of Treasurer Collector is important in any town and should be run efficiently, responsibly, and effectively. Thank you for your time and I ask for your vote for me, Paula Newt, on April 27th. Thank you. I'm John D. Kelly. I'm running for the Town of Carver Department of Public Works Commissioners. I've been there a few years, and I hope that you people will let me stay another four, four, three years, and I will uh, try to do the best I can to help you people. And it's your job to go to the town and vote. Please vote. And don't let things slide because it's your, your vote counts. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for taking the time to get to know our candidates this year. My name is Lynn Doyle, and I am running for the position of town clerk. Our present town clerk, G. McGillicuddy, has decided after much consideration to retire and spend more time with her family. I would like to take a moment to tell you a little about myself. I moved to Carver in 1999 and have called Carver my home for 14 years. I've raised two wonderful children in Carver who are now adults with productive lives of their own. I volunteered at the schools when my children were young. Working in the town clerk's office, I've had the pleasure of getting to know many of the residents. I have been witness to many wonderful as well as difficult occasions in our town, but the one thing I've seen that remains constant is the ability of the residents to pull together and be there for one another. I am proud to be part of this community. The profession of municipal clerk is a time-honored and historical one. Over 90% of the activity that is supervised by the town clerk is mandated by law. Recording births, deaths, and marriages was one of the earliest statutory duties imposed by the general court on town clerks. Since the revolution, the general court has continuously added new duties, and at the present time there are 451 functions listed in the Mass General Laws that fall under the authority of the town clerk. The town clerk's office serves as a central information point for local residents, and that is evident by the inquiries we field on a daily basis. We respond to a variety of requests from how do I get a question on a ballot, to questions about where to find food pantries and even fuel assistance. 
The town clerk records and certifies all official actions of the town, including town meeting legislation and appropriations, planning and zoning board decisions, signs all notes for borrowing, and is keeper of the town seal. Among the many duties of the town clerk, those relating to elections and town meetings are the most complex. The town clerk serves as chief election official, recording officer, registrar of vital records, public records and information officer, and licensing officer. In short, the town clerk wears many hats. Residents and non-residents alike have frequently complimented the town clerk's office on our exemplary customer service. I take pride in our professionalism and compassion for the people. The state legislators are constantly changing the laws that govern the town clerk's office, ensuring that the work can never be boring. I enjoy the interesting and challenging work. Most importantly, I enjoy working with the public and want to continue to do so in a capacity that I believe supports the members of our community. I have worked in the town clerk's office since 2007 in the position of records technician. These past six years have helped to prepare me for the position of town clerk. I am a notary public and a member of the Board of Registrars. I have completed my first year of a three-year certification program at the New England Municipal Clerks Institute, working toward becoming a certified municipal clerk, and I have been elected as secretary of my class. I was voted secretary treasurer of the Friends of Carver Council on Aging, and was a former recording secretary for the planning board. I am proud to say I have been chapter chair of the Service Employees International Union, Local 888, representing the library and town hall union employees. I have been a professional businesswoman for over 30 years, 15 of which were in a management capacity. I care about the people of this community and want to take on a greater leadership role. A few initiatives I am particularly proud of since I've worked in the office have been the work I've done to help continue the office transition from paper-based to technology-based to best meet the needs of today. I have worked closely with the website committee to help improve access to meeting postings and compliance with the open meeting laws, as well as disseminating elections and town meeting information to the public. I implemented office procedures for the state ethics reform bill and the new open meeting laws. As your town clerk, I will continue to provide the dependable service you have come to know our office so well for. I hope to implement procedures in the town clerk's office to accept credit and debit cards as payment for fees. I will continue to work with the website committee to help improve access to vital town information and ease transactions. I will work hard to earn your trust and respect, and I would be honored to serve as your town clerk. I would like to ask that you vote experience, vote Lynn Doyle on Saturday, April 27th. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Mike Paddock, 23 West Street. I'm running for Board of Assessors. I just wanted to come in today to thank the town of Carver for three years ago electing me for this position. Uh, I've learned a lot in three years. Three years ago, I didn't know how to spell assessor. Uh, since then, you've sent me to school. Uh, I've learned all the nuts and bolts of what assessing is, what it does, what it means, and I've learned to work with a board that's uh, very competent and very helpful to the citizens of the town. I was very surprised about a few things with assessing, one of which was, and I'm grateful for this, none of the assessing department like taxes, which was a surprise to me. Uh, also, we have one of the most competent departments uh, that I've seen. I'm very pleased with the work that's being done there, uh, how it's being done. I think we do an excellent job in the department. One of the and things our assessing department does that few people know is it saves our town a lot of money. Many things that other assessing departments farm out to expensive and private contractors, we do ourselves in-house in town. Uh, our assessing department not only works at educating other assessors, but they're also uh, improving their education as well.
And our Board of Assessors is doing the same thing as we've taken additional certifications. So I'm really, really happy with how we treat our customers, how we treat people in the town, and I've been really pleased to see how well I can fit in trying to translate what few of us understand on those little property cards to, to us regular people uh, who want to know why they're getting taxed, what they're getting taxed. So thank you for supporting me. I would appreciate your vote. I know I'm running unopposed, but I appreciate your vote anyway, and thank you again. Hello, my name is Brian Abatello, and I'm a candidate for the Carver Redevelopment Authority. My wife Janice and I have been living in Carver at 15 Wade Street since 2007. We moved here because of my job with a major communications company in the area. Since then, we have enjoyed living in Carver with its quiet setting and personable residence. My purpose for reaching out to you today is not only for you to put a face to the name, but also for me to explain my intentions for seeking a seat on the Redevelopment Authority. First, I have always been a civic-minded individual who believes in taking action and being part of the greater good. In addition, I appreciate the natural beauty within this town's borders and wish to ensure its preservation while serving on this board. Also, I believe there are ways to generate revenue for this town by the redevelopment of its properties while still respecting the rights of the townspeople. Finally, I look forward to working for you as a member of the Redevelopment Authority and hope that you will support my efforts in realizing this goal. Please remember me favorably when you enter the polls on April 27th. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gina Hanlon Kavicki, and I moved to Carver 10 years ago with my husband Chad. Since moving to the town, we have been blessed with our daughter Sophia, who attends Carver Elementary School. As a family, we have grown to love this town and we have taken an active part in the community. I previously spent two years on the Carver School Council where I became well versed in the curriculum and literacy programs as well as some of the other budgetary needs and concerns of the school system. I also served on the school committee for two years and during the second year I served as the vice chair. While a part of the school committee I took part in various budget meetings, policy work and negotiations all of which I found enjoyable and informative. I learned a great deal during that time, and after a year away from the committee, I decided that I wanted to return to it and bring my experience to the challenges the town faces at this very important and difficult time. I look forward to your support on Saturday, April 27th. <laughs> 